What is freedom? What is redemption? When a person has no other addition onto himself, there's no tziruf, there's no combination. There is the, the basic human, the basic person, the real person, without tziruf, without addition. For instance, what is a slave? A slave is somebody who has a master. So the slave is not all alone, he's not all by himself. He has a master that controls him, that tells him what to do. What do you you say a person is wealthy? What does it mean? There's him, and there's his bank account, and there's his homes, and there's his businesses. He's not the person. When you're saying somebody's wealthy, what you're actually indicating is that the, this person is not enough on his or her own. They're not even worth mentioning. Ah, but they're wealthy. So you have the person, and you have the tziruf, the addition of a bank account, of businesses, of homes, of other things. Tziruf. When there is addition, which usually is what wealth represents for most people. That represents addition. But that's not the secret of Pesach. So here, again, just to, to, to remind us of this phrase of this teaching, that what is Geula? What is redemption? Right. So on Pesach, we want to get out of any problem that we have, of any darkness that we have. If a person is ill, we want health to come. If a person is having business trouble, we want to have, have abundance and blessings. If a person is having family trouble, we want the, 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 the healing to that. That is not a shirut, but that is geula. That is not wealth, but it has to come from a place of redemption, which has to be a place where there is no tziruf. You get the pure man, the pure person, the pure woman, no addition. So let's, let's begin to understand that concept. That's geula. Geula is not ashirut, redemption, going out of darkness and all the gifts of Pesach, is not related to what most people have a concept of wealth, which is an individual who is not enough on their own, but because they have this and they have that and they have this and they have that. They have other things that you can attach to them. Therefore, they're worth it. Therefore, they're somebody. Therefore, they're something. Ve'ein bezegula. If you if you need or are in a state where you're seeking addition, meaning you do not appreciate nor know that how powerful you are all by yourself, but you need this and that and this person to think that and this thing to have there. That is not geula. That is not redemption. It might be ashirut. You might be seen as a wealthy person or a good person or, or other things that people attach to you. You know, usually you know you buy you know you buy a camera, you buy a computer, or you buy something and you either buy it and use it as an own, or you buy the attachments. So if something's powerful, you don't need attachments. If a person's powerful, he doesn't need attachments. Unfortunately, as we will come to see, our world is a world where everybody thinks I need an attachment. I am only important or happy if this person's here with me. I am only happy if I have this. I am only happy if I have this attachment and that attachment and this attachment. This world, as the Maharal will say beautifully, is a world of tziruf, is a world of attachment, of combination, not a world of purity, of singularity. So when we, in our upside-down world, when we usually say that there is wealth, what we mean in a deep spiritual way is that this person cannot stand on his or her own. They do not stand, or even Chaz Shalom, we do not stand on our own, but only with this siruf, with the addition of this and that, this person, this bank account, this thing. That's ashirut in our mind. That's, that's the wealth of this world. That consciousness, that consciousness of tziruf, that consciousness of needing the attachment, this thing and that thing and this addition and that addition, is is the counter side to redemption. You have a problem that needs redemption, and we all do to some extent, whether it's physical or spiritual, 
You can't get there in the state of Ashirut, in the state of Tzirut, in a state where you think, I need this or I need that. Where you do not have appreciation and unfortunately usually connection to who you are without Tzirut, without any attachment, without any addition. הדבר שיש בו עניות ואין לו קניין, רק עומד בעצמו. What is the secret of poor? Is a consciousness, is a person who stands on his or her own. I don't need attachments, I don't need anything else. שייך בו גאולה. That's a person who's ready to receive redemption. Ready to receive redemption. Now, והלא, אבל לחם עוני הזה הוא בעל עצם היציאה לחירות. And if we ask the question, the Maharal asks, why do we call it the bread of the poor, if we're representing redemption, if the light that we want to draw, and if the consciousness that we want to have is of redemption, why is it called the bread of the poor? Because we're talking about the secret of the consciousness of the poor, of real poor, not what, you know, the way people see it in this world, don't understand the secret. Poor means a person who could stand on their own. A person who understands that my soul and my light is so powerful on its own. I don't need attachments. I don't need other people. I don't need other things. I am standing on my own. That, some people will call that poor. Oh, look at this person. He doesn't need a big, big, a big amount of money in his bank account. He doesn't need uh, 10 people to say that he's amazing. He doesn't need all these people to lift him or her up. He or she stands on their own. Poor, poor person, no. The Maharal says that is the redemption person. That is the person who can receive the light of redemption, who can receive the total, receive the total assistance and overwhelming abundance that is available through the redemption, through the light of Tessa. Very important understanding. And again, as I said, what we want to awaken as we think about this, we come to Tessa. I have to let go of the attachment. I have to let go of the consciousness that I need all these people and things and so on and so forth. I cannot stand on my own. Lechem oni, bread of the poor, what's the country of the poor? I don't ha have nor need anything else to make me stand up. I stand on my own because I have an understanding, a connection to the power of my soul and I, again, this is the gift of Pesach, and unfortunately, I would say most of us will be honest with ourselves, I'm not there yet. I'm not a person who can, who can know that I stand on my own, that I have all the power and the strength and the connection that I need. I don't need any attachments, I don't need anybody else. But this is the gift of Pesach. I want to become, I want to become a person who knows that I stand on my own. That I don't need this thing to be happy or that thing to make me feel better. I am omed be'atzmo. I stand on my own. I stand on my own. That's the secret of poor. That's the secret of, of, of the poor bread. Etzem ha'yetzia lecherut. Going out of darkness, out of lack, out of what's called Egypt, which represents all the things that we want to get rid of on Pesach. Eino that can only happen to the degree that you separate yourself from any attachments, from all the things that you think that you need to be happy, to be supported, to feel good about yourself, and so on and so forth, which is the, the lie of this world, the consciousness, as we will come to see, that is the opposite of Pesach, but that is the, the consciousness that permeates our world. We think this all the time. In the few seconds we're happy, in the few seconds that we feel a connection to the light of the Creator, where we're experiencing what's called the light of Pesach, or the light of the Geulah, the light of the redemption, where we're experiencing what? We're experiencing the consciousness of the secret of four, which is just me. Just me. I can stand on my own, I, can, I have all the light. But all the other times, I need this, and I need that, and when I get this, and when I get that, or when this person says this, or when this person says that, all this tzeruf, all this addition, that is the opposite of Geulah. You cannot go out of darkness. You cannot go out of 
uh, uh, the, 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 all the things that keep you lacking, kim bihistalek inyan hatzeru. When you remove from yourself completely all the attachments, all the need for others to build you up, to hold you up, and so on. Shelo yenimtza hitztalfut klal. When you are able to experience the consciousness of no need for any attachment or anybody else to do this in order for me to feel better, to feel connected, to feel light, to feel happy. When there is no attachment, when there is no need for others to do this for me or do that for me or other things, that is redemption. That is redemption. That is the secret of redemption. And that is why. Why do we eat matzah? Now we understand. Why do we eat matzah and Pesach? Because we know how difficult, how much we are invested in the world of attachment, in the world of addition, in the world of tziruf. That I need all these things. We eat matzah because it's the, the energy of the matzah, but you have to eat it with this consciousness. I want to come to the consciousness of knowing I do not need anything in addition to me. I stand on my own. I stand on my own with happiness, with fulfillment, with wisdom, with light. You eat the matzah for seven days to heal yourself of the darkness of tziruf, of addition, of attachment. Again, as I said, this is such a, uh, an all-encompassing reality with which we live. And therefore, the desperate need that we have for the matzah, for the consciousness of Pesach, to free us to become omed ve'atzmo. That I can stand on my own, to come to, to live with that consciousness. Ba'avur she'ein ba'matzah rak etzem ha'lechem, ve'lo yitztaref bo davar min se'or ve'hu kemo'ani, and that's why matzah is the most basic of breads. It is... On its own. Water, flour, done. No yeast, no eggs, no, nothing in addition. Because the consciousness of matzah, when you put matzah in your mouth, what you're ingesting, what you're connecting to, is the consciousness of not needing others. To hold you up, to make you feel better. No need for attachments. Coming to the consciousness, I am omed be'atzmo. I stand on my own with all of my great light,